Hope you enjoyed your fourth. And now we're two months away from our next holiday, Labor Day. So let's make our own fun by starting this week's Explore Tulsa with a guy who collects fighter jets. Then getting healthy with Drs. Mark and Michelle. Followed by a couple of guys hooked on adventure. Plus who's minding the brewery? Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. Hello, and thank you for stopping in for this week's Explore Tulsa. Now, Stevie, did you ever dream of being a pilot? I think all kids dream of that. But me, I wanted to be Walt Disney or a speed racer more. Mm, lucky for us, Dr. John Schwartz wanted to be a pilot, which led him to becoming an amazing surgeon that collects the jets he dreamed of flying. As a kid growing up in rural America, in the 60s, uh, I think everybody, every boy's dream was uh, to become a jet fighter pilot and probably an astronaut as well. So, of course, we did everything we could to fulfill those fantasies. For as long as I can remember as a young guy, I always wanted to go to the Air Force. Air Force Academy was my preferred method of getting there, and I always wanted to fly fighter jets. From the academy, I had a choice of going directly to medical school. I'd done well enough academically uh, and uh, was a pre-med major. Uh, but I also had my slot uh, for to start undergraduate pilot training at Vance Air Force Base. I was actually very excited when I got that news and went to the nearest phone booth and called my fiance at the time to give her the great news that we were moving to Enid, Oklahoma to start pilot training. And it was at that time I learned that uh, she was not particularly keen on having a, a pilot as a husband, especially a military pilot. Uh, in those days, uh, aviation was a little bit different. Uh, so her choice was I go to medical school, which I did. After medical school, postgraduate training, uh, raising a family, uh, my aviation dreams were placed on hold for quite a few years. Looking back, I think her advice was well taken. Uh, she is now my wife of 40 years. And uh, looking back at my uh, academy classmates and roommates, I can count uh, six of them that are no longer with us as a result of uh, aircraft incidents in the military. So it was a good decision. Unfortunately for her, she gave me the permission to start flying again once our children were grown and out of the house. And I think she's uh, uh, regretting that decision to finally give me permission to start flying again. The aircraft I have are incredibly rare. Uh, they represent early uh, American history, jet age history. Uh, these are actual aircraft flown by the U.S. Air Force. They weren't built in some foreign country by some foreign air force and then imported. These are true survivors, which is very rare. After World War II, the U.S. government developed a policy that uh, equipment would be destroyed. Uh, it was no longer going to be made available to civilians. But uh, a few aircraft were disseminated to uh, vocational teaching centers and uh, the purpose then was to develop aviation mechanics at the Votech schools and these aircraft were uh, sent to various Votech schools around the country and used to teach uh, young men how to rebuild engines, how to work on the electrical systems. The contracts uh, were worded such that after a period of time the Votech school would be declared the owner of it and they could do with it whatever they want and a very, very rare few survived their days in the Votech schools and actually ended up in civilian hands. And these are some examples of those aircraft. The examples that we're standing in front of now, this one particularly, is very important. It actually is the oldest airworthy jet in the world right now. It is the only flying example of the F-86A model. This particular aircraft was built in 1948. It is the world's oldest flying jet as well. The flights in these airplanes are relatively limited. The flights that I take are simply to maintain proficiency. 
The skills required to fly these safely aren't maintained if you ignore them. So you do have to fly the airplanes for proficiency. More importantly, they are taken to air shows and displayed publicly. I think it's important for people to see uh, what our early military history was all about. Grand Lake attracted us uh, many, many years ago uh, when uh, we were becoming civilians, transitioning from the Air Force to civilian life. Uh, so we fell in love with Grand Lake many, many uh, years ago and it uh, has been our home now. We've raised our children here and uh, this is where they call home as well. Those jets are incredible, and Dr. Swartz keeps them looking like brand new. Dr. Swartz and his jets are a part of the Living Grand on Grand Lake show that our Swartz Tulsa crew produces each week for RSU.TV, and it airs each Thursday evening at 8 p.m. I wonder if all doctors collect interesting things like jets. Ooh, you should ask doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood when we talk to them next about the Functional Medical Institute with more Swartz Tulsa just ahead. We do podiatry, we do dental oral appliances, we do women's health, we see children, pediatrics, and um, overall family care. I'm a primary care provider for Sooner Care. We're also taking commercial insurances now as well. Any given day, I might do a well child on a four-day-old baby and then see a 72-year-old who's here because they need to follow up on their sleep study. Patients seem to like the idea where they can just come here and they don't have to worry about going to all these different specialists, whether they need a sleep study or a CPAP machine or diabetic shoes or an oral appliance, we help bring all that to the table for them. And especially with oral appliances, custom fit by a specially trained dentist and we have Dr. Bennett who's the best in the business. It has been my dream to be able to work with all the specialties together. There are not many places in the United States that have all parts of this together. It's, it's, to me, it's amazing, and that's truly how sleep and patient care should be. 600 million people from over 238,000 miles away watched what no other person had ever done before. Neil Armstrong became the first man to step on the surface of the moon. That's one small step for man, one Television brings us more than just entertainment. It brings us history. History that changes our lives. Sony and Video Revolution take you there. From space travel to world championships. Tomorrow's technology today. 4K smart TVs and the largest flat screens available. Now more than ever, you have the best seat in the world when history is made. Video Revolution. On the northwest corner, 71st and Lewis. Hello, glad to see you back with us for more Explore Tulsa. Hey, Stevie, have you uh, lost some weight? Thanks for noticing. I've lost about 20 pounds, but these days, it's really hard with so many different diets, like the berry from that TV doctor and Oprah's new commercials doing yoga in her yard. It's hard to know which one can get the job done for you. That's where the Functional Medical Institute steps in with a complete plan to keep you healthy and fit for life. Doctors Mark and Michelle don't just preach it, they live it. Mm -hmm. Well, oftentimes people that come into the Functional Medical Institute have been everywhere. You know, they've been to the doctor that's given them five sets of pills or five different pills. They've been to the doctor that's injected their back or they've been through surgeries and things they, they just haven't, they haven't helped and or they're grasping at straws. You know, they're, they're looking for an answer to, to get better and they're, they're tired of the prescription pad. They're tired of being just told that you have to live with it that way. So they want a better way for themselves and they find themselves at the Functional Medical Institute. The Functional Medical Institute is a place where people can come to get completely well, uh, physically, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. Uh, number one is we want to eliminate all unnecessary medication usage, which we believe that's very important. Number two, we want to eliminate and eradicate all self-imposed choice-driven diseases from the planet. And there are many of those. And the overriding mission is we want to change the world one person at a time regarding health. Mm -hmm.
So when I opened the Functional Medical Institute, uh, it was a vision of whole body medicine. So when Dr. Mark joined we, me, we just take, took that vision and expanded upon it and made it greater. You know, when two become one, it is multiplied. And that's just how it's become. We've become an institute for wellness and an institute of teaching. And it takes more than just one person. Patients need tools, they need people, and we've come together to provide that for them. And oftentimes when people walk in the door, they're, they're coming in telling me they have a physical need, but they're broken in another way. They're either broken emotionally or they're broken spiritually. And the Functional Medical Institute, we embrace people at whatever walk of step or step of life that they're in, and we get to that root. And we help them unravel that root and unwind that root so they can become completely and totally well. And we help give them all of the tools that they need to live a healthy lifestyle all of their years. You know, we're not into long living un unless we help have a healthy, long lifespan. We're into the quality of life. Yeah, um, you know, we can't control um, quantity, but we can control quality. And the thing that we're not seeing today in the world is quality. You know, people are living longer, yes, but are they living longer? There's nothing worse than seeing someone really die through life. You know, every day they just get closer to death. I mean, what is that? We want to give them life while they're living. And, you know, I don't control the, the day of their death. But all of us have control over the quality of our life and what we do with it. If you come in here, we're going to give you encouragement. We're going to give you accessibility to us. And you can bet that every day, no matter how bad you are, there's no judgment, no condemnation, but it's always going to be, let's figure this thing out and get you up there. We're going to set the bar high for you, and we're going to teach you how to jump that high. So you're going to have both ways to reach that. So oftentimes I'll see my staff just absolutely panicked by the person that's coming in the door broken and sick and wondering how are we gonna fix this? And then they come in and they transition through the clinic and I see that person transformed and they walk out the, on the other side a completely different human being. They've got a smile, they come in with a frown, their smile's upside down and they leave with a smile on their face and joy in their heart. Doctors Mark and Michelle not only know their stuff, they really care about you as a person and not just as a patient. To learn how to get started with whole body healing for yourself, visit fmidr.com. I bet those people who run after tornadoes could get a benefit from getting healthier with Doctors Mark and Michelle. Well, everyone can benefit from getting into better shape, Stevie, but our next guests are storm chasers and they're not actually doing any running. I guess we'll find out and see who runs faster, JC or Greg, next when Explore Tulsa continues. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 claims to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa Best. And our drive to at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates. The oils generally consumed for cooking like vegetable and canola oil aren't exactly good for your health. One of the most important factors to consider when choosing a cooking oil is the temperature at which an oil undergoes oxidation, also known as its smoke point. When an oil reaches its smoke point, the molecular structure can be changed into compounds that are dangerous to consume. As a rule of thumb, the more refined the oil, the higher the smoke point. Four healthier cooking oil choices are coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, and ghee. Download our free smoke point chart for exact temperatures these oils and others undergo oxidation at SherwoodWellness.tv. Recently, the 3rd of July thunderstorms were almost as exciting as the fireworks on the 4th. And that's the show that JC and Greg spend most of their time looking for as local storm chasers. Oh, their lives are just like the movie Twister with Bill Harding and Dr. Joe chasing tornadic activity. Mm, I don't think either of them have seen a flying cow though. Um, you know, it's just, it's an insatiable appetite. I, 
Every time I experience a tornado, especially you get up close to one, you know, and you really experience the power of it and how massive it is, uh, it's that, it, that moment you capture that is just, that's what draws you back. Well, back in 2012, um, I started doing photography and I decided, okay, well, I want to put a, por uh, a tornado in my portfolio. That's something I really wanted to add. So I went out with a bunch of storm chasers and decided, hey, let's go, you know, storm chasing. Saw my first tornado um, and I was, you know, it was just taken away. It was breathtaking. So then I started chasing and learning how to, you know, read, you know, somewhat read models and, and get into storm chasing. And, and uh, basically what I did is I just started learning how to chase from other storm chasers and uh, decided this is something that I wanted to do. Uh, when I was 12 years old, uh, April 24th, 93, we had a F4 tornado that hit Catoosa um, and I was in Midtown and saw the wall cloud go overhead and uh, basically I ran outside because the sirens were going off and um, looked up, the wall cloud went directly overhead, it was rotating really vigorously and I uh, was completely enamored by it and I uh, went home that night, turned on the news and heard reports of the damage and recovery and it was kind of a birth of an obsession, I had to see it again. When I look at a storm, I'm, I'm trying to catch the best angle of that storm when I'm on it. You know, I just want to, I want to get the shot. Lightning's really, I, 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 honestly, a, a lot of people like the tornadoes the best, but I like the lightning and the structure. The tornado is the added bonus is what I call it. And I definitely, you know, getting the tornado is, is worth the trip when you go out far or, you know, just go out on, on the road and, and try to capture these storms. Uh, Roger Hill, a guy I work for, he runs uh, tornado tours. I actually do, um, I'm a tour guide for him. So what, how that works is um, we basically, um, people that are interested in seeing tornadoes and severe weather from all across the world, uh, they basically pay a fee and they come fly in. We'll be leaving out of Denver this next Saturday. Um, and then basically we take them in vans across you know, the Great Plains of the United States and in search of supercells and tornadoes, supercells being the big rotating thunderstorms. Uh, I, uh, I chase for Channel 2, and basically what I do is I live stream, and my video goes to the news station so they can air it, and whatever I see, they see. I do phoners, um, you know, sometimes I'll come across the flood rescue, stuff like that, and have to do different things for the news station. Technology has absolutely changed. When I started chasing in the mid-late 90s, my first few years I had basically a fold-up road map, the AM radio or the crackle from lightning, we could use that kind of detective storm of strengthening. And then uh, we basically had to make a forecast and just go out blind and watch the clouds. But since I've been storm chasing, you know, there's been tools that have helped you get to your storm better and identify you know where you should be and and getting information out to the public's a lot easier now basically now you can get all the data that meteorologist has in an office you can get it inside your vehicle it's my escape i'm able to get out on the road you know if i see a tornado i can report it to my news station and then they can inform the viewers um, but also I, I just i like capturing the storm uh, you know being a photographer Seeing something so breathtaking like that is just awesome to capture. Hey, I appreciate what those guys do, but I never want to be a storm chaser. For one, I don't read a map very well, and I'm directionally challenged. Then you're better off keeping up with storm chasers on the local forecast. But if you'd like to take a storm tour with Greg, visit SilverLiningTours.com. Or look for some of JC's storm chasing images at PhotosByJCR.com. Oh, I bet those guys spend a lot of time on the road and all sorts of different types of back roads. I bet they've seen a lot of dead armadillos, <laughs> like the one Tony found when he he decided to name his brewery after one. We'll get the whole story next when we come back with more Explore Tulsa. We can control lighting products, shade, thermostats. We can integrate with alarm companies, door locks, ceiling fans, sprinkler systems. For instance, if you wanted to walk into your theater room and press play on your DVD and you want your lights to turn down 50%, if you want to turn your lamp on and off, if you want to be able to start your coffee pot in the morning or set a timer to do that with Z-Wave technology, you have that capability. 
From ground zero, a customer can start with as simple as a couple light switches or light bulbs even from Philips and go through and we can build on that and decide if they want to scale it out and they really enjoy those features. And then if you want to add your lights, your thermostats, controlling your garage door, closing drapes, anything that you may want to do can be added piece by piece. We don't like to have to press buttons if we don't have to. We have began to do integration with voice control where you can actually speak in a room. You can give out a simple command like lock the door, uh, turn up the thermostat to 75 degrees. And with preset commands you can make shades come down, lights come on, or make your television start playing Netflix, all with very simple voice prompts. Normally we like to set up a free in-home consultation. We'll come out, see what your needs are, see what equipment you may have. A lot of modern products are already compatible with smart control and home automation. We can give suggestions from there, see what all you may want to be able to control. The possibilities are endless these days. Well, hello. We're glad to see you back for more Explore Tulsa. And if you're a fan of craft breweries, then you're at the right place. And Tony and Todd work hard to make sure every drop gives their friends at the tap room something to cheer about. Mm -hmm. So it started as a hobby. In 2006, we had moved back here from Kansas. Um, and our pastor at the time, he taught me how to brew. And uh, we brewed in my garage and in his backyard and, um, for several years. And then I kind of started kind of doing it on my own, you know, as much as I could and just kind of got obsessed with it and trying new recipes and trying new things and new hops and just different, uh, different styles and um, just kind of took off and decided that um, maybe this hobby could, could become a business. Yeah, I think our experience is probably not unlike most people who get into the brewing field. It, we all really generally start as hobbyists. Home brewing is kind of the catalyst that get people interested in this field. Um, some people get the bug and can't shake it and end up having to do what we do. Well, I always hoped to make the best beer ever, but uh, no, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too serious, you know. I love the brewing process and I love, you know, the creating something that people can, you know, try and I can share it with them and um, so it's always been fun. We were up in Kansas at my parents' house and uh, we knew at the time we wanted to start a brewery, but uh, we didn't know what to call it and we had a list of hundreds of names, trying to tie it to Oklahoma, trying to tie it to, you know, Tulsa, the area, just something. Up at my parents in Kansas, we moved some uh, lumber for them off the side of the barn, and there underneath is a squished armadillo. I don't know how he got under there, if there was a nest, if he got under there and it shifted and squished him, but it was, he was squished and he kind of looks like our, you know, logo, um, upside down, kind of decomposed, and um, we start talking about it, and that's where you see him. You see him on the side of the road, feet in the air, and uh, um, we put the diamond around it, you know, for the road sign, and uh, it just tied right in. When we first started, it's unfortunate that the laws were the way they were, but um, the legislature and, and people um, that have interests in this, I mean, they've pushed and helped, and all of us have, you know, called our senators and made sure that our, the bills that were out there that um, did good got passed, and, it's, uh, it's turned around. The most important uh, law change that happened for us, and I think by and large for brewing in Oklahoma, is SB 424 that passed in August of last year. And what that allows us to do is actually have this space that we're standing in right now, and we can serve High Point beer directly to the consumers. It's been a complete game changer, not only for us, but really for everyone in the business. I mean, it's, we, do a, we do a great business here in the tap room, and it's just getting better and better all the time. And, Next year when the other laws go into effect, I think that's going to be another big step for the state. From a marketing standpoint, I mean, this is really um, a branding agent. So this space exists to actively market and brand our products to the public. Um, it does more to reach out in a, you know, in a specific way to individuals than social media can than billboards can, uh, and they come in and they're in our space rather than us trying to gain access to their space. So they come in and they're immersed in our world and we get to show them what we do and they get to see something that, you know, hopefully they're not seeing anywhere else. People are being more accepting of craft beer. Uh, people want that local connection, that small independent business owner who is trying to make it, you know, make their craft and, and make it for their neighborhoods. You know, it's getting back to the to the neighborhood level. You know, there's breweries that build um, themselves on that, that they will be the neighborhood bar again, like it used to be. 
we love Tulsa. I mean, it's a, it's a great town. Um, there's just nothing like it. We love it, and there's no way we would go anywhere else. Yeah, you know, every once in a while we kind of have to, you know, it's stressful. We're doing this. We're, we're in there every day, and it's a business now. I mean, it's not the sit back and relax and have a homebrew all the time, but uh, um, every once in a while we kind of step back and just look at it and go, wow, you know, I can't believe where we're at. I know we need to go farther and we need to get bigger and we need to do it better, but uh, it, every once in a while you kind of got to step back and just revel in what we've created, and it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's exciting and it's, it's gratifying. I love finding stories like Tony's, where someone with a dream and some drive turned their hobby into a career. Mm, to find out how to enjoy a dead armadillo brew for yourself, visit dabrewery.com. In trying to figure out how to close the show, I was amazed at how many different singers have performed songs with armadillos in them. Huh, like who? Paul McCartney, hmm. Pink Floyd, George Str even Ice Cube oh. had one. So. I decided to write one oh, on my own. Oh, let's cut to commercial. There's a dead armadillo in the middle of the road. Dead armadillo in the middle of the Stick road. Stick around, there's more Explore Tulsa just ahead. Mm. Take charge of your health. We are what we put into our bodies. We approach medicine from a unique standpoint. Rather than treating only the symptoms of an illness, we work to find the root cause and promote wellness of the entire body. Our clinic offers complete assessment and treatment programs including hormone replacement therapy, osteopathic manipulative therapy, and genetic DNA testing. It all starts with a medical evaluation. Contact us today to begin your path to wellness. Be sure and join us next week when we meet Relay of Relay's Vietnamese restaurant. Special thanks to John Schwartz and RSU TV for sharing the Good Doctors classic Air Force jets with us. Thanks too to Drs. Mark and Michelle Sherwood for keeping Tulsa healthy at the Functional Medical Institute. And thanks to J.C. Reynolds and Greg McLaughlin for teaching us a thing or two about storm chasing. Plus thanks to Tony and Todd for making their tap room a great place to make friends at the Dead Armadillo Brewery. Remember, if you miss any of the show, you can always catch us at ExploreTulsa.com. Come. As always, each week we feature the people, places, and attractions that make us proud to call Tulsa our home. Hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook and share with us someone you think Tulsa should know more about. Plus, remember, Explore Tulsa is brought to you by Video Revolution, located on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Stop by, say hello to Ron and all the guys for all your home entertainment needs. And Explore Tulsa is also proudly brought to you by Dr. Robert Zollner and Associates. I'm at Tulsa's best eye care value with two locations, 3030 South Harvard and 69th and Memorial. And we welcome our newest sponsors, Doctors Mark and Michelle Sherwood at 61st and Sheridan. Remember, your journey to whole body healing and wellness begins with the Functional Medical Institute. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this week's show, but we'll see you next week right here on Explore Tulsa.